Good evening. Um, I think I finally found the story I want to make for my first video. Even though I've already shot a few videos. <laughs> um, anyway, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Cisco, and I work for an airline. Um, I have my degree in aviation and aerospace operations, but I want to focus on the aviation side of that degree. I'm 25, single, and fresh out of college. I'd say it's been about a semester since I graduated. Today is uh, June, July 16th, 2018, and Man, what a day I had today, <laughs> I'll tell you what. So, this is a series I like to call Cisco After College. Um, it's kind of gonna detail my life a little bit of where I'm at now. In each video I consequently kind of talk a little bit about where I'm at and what is going on with me at that time. But today I just kind of want to one, talk about what this even is in the first place, and two, talk about, you know, where, where is this going to go? Three, I want to tell a story about growth today, because for one, this is a vlog. It's a blog, but like a video version of it. Now, I know most people, when they do their vlogs, they like to show themselves talking into the camera. Um, although I don't feel self-conscious about the way I look, and actually I do know that I'm a handsome individual, not to say that I'm conceited or vain in any way, just women, various women, including a woman I used to, you know, absolutely adore, the woman of my dreams, used to call me handsome, so I can safely assume people find me handsome, you know? <laughs> it's like deductive reasoning. But, I don't know, I just don't like the idea of people staring at my face while I talk to them. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show me walking around Colorado. This is a wonderful place. But, you may be thinking to yourself, why is this video at night? Why is he shooting this at midnight? Well, first off, because I kind of had some eye openers and just the kind of day this was, felt it was right. But two, I guess you could say this is symbolic, you know. I, uh, as far as I'm concerned in my life, I'm at a spiritual low point. You know, I, I used to be a very joyful, jovial person, very happy. Um, I always smiled and laughed and don't get me wrong I'm still the smiley laughy person I was back then but I didn't need to turn to smoking tobacco or drinking alcohol or other vices I didn't snap as much in anger I didn't cuss at all and I was still a virgin back then among other stuff <laughs> so yeah let's just say I have really fallen from grace, but it was for the best. Enough about that. Let's talk about why I'm doing this. So I'm recently graduated out of college and I'm a, a millennial like many people who would go on YouTube and watch a random person talk about their lives. I recently graduated so I can't be like oh, I'm a millennial straight out of high school trying to make it big because I'm not I'm straight out of college and the reason I went to college is because of my life dream to own an airport or an airline one of those two I want to own an airport or own an airline um, I know those are big goals but I'm taking steps to do that and uh, my first step is to figure out what the airline I work for did wrong in the past and to learn what they're doing wrong now 
and to learn how to make that right. So I'm setting up on my airline for now, which will remain anonymous for the time being. I don't know if it's a good idea for me to t disclose uh, which airline I work for. Um, because I work in, I mean, because I live in Thornton, Colorado, just north of Denver, Colorado, it's safe to assume I work at Denver International Airport. You know, working for an airline and not a regional carrier. Huh, somebody uh, left their trash. Lovely. And I just want to kind of document my life, where I'm at, and how I progress along, you know. As far as the car, I got the car. It's a 2010 Subaru Forester. Uh, I only go three grand on it. Um, and I have way more than that. I have double that right now. Just in my savings, you know, that doesn't count, include my investments. So, the only reason I'm still paying it off is for credit benefits. And, uh, you know, I, I want good credit. I want credit to buy a house. So I've purposely put myself in this position where I'm paying roughly 250 bucks a month. And I'll be paying that for an extended period of time. And occasionally I drop the occasional 300 in just to kind of... Make sure I don't pay the full two years on that. And for those of you who aren't too sure how much that is, I, I took out 4,500 on the loan. And I took this loan out in January. So it's only been about, what, six months of my 24 months. But, I feel like I'm a lot further ahead because I've dropped like 600 extra bucks, so nice. And just kind of want to document stories, you know, things that happen to me as life progresses, things that I learn, lessons that I learn. So I want people to kind of get an idea of how they themselves can grow, and I want to be an asset. Oh, yeah, it is still recording. I want to be an asset to this world. I want to provide value. I want to use my story in a sense to, you know, inspire other people to do what they love, to do what they want to do. And I'll explain how I got to deciding that aviation and owning an airline or an airport was that thing I want to do, even though I grew up wanting to be a pilot. <laughs> but life got in the way. I can't be a pilot anymore because of my retina. It got detached. Um, I can go more in detail about that later, but for now I just want to tell the story about tonight. But, let's see. I am about to buy a cigar. So how about I tell you the story while I'm puffing. So, I'm gonna go from, okay, I'm not gonna light this here. Don't be stupid people. Don't light your cigarettes and cigars at a freaking gas station sake um but i'm gonna go from uh, walking in a kind of closed off area to walking in public with this thing on my head so uh <laughs> i'm gonna get ready for some looks maybe <laughs> it's one in the morning i don't think anybody cares that is so flimsy So tonight, um, we had an hour and a half where the ramp was closed due to lightning. You know what that means in aviation? That means that a lot of planes, um, one of the supervisors called and I actually informed him that it was 25 planes, uh, four mainline and 21 express. So. That many flights got diverted to like Colorado Springs, Pueblo, Cheyenne. Um, I think those are like the four main ones that are the three main ones that they uh, divert to. And they have to stay there for two hours to get back on track, which means so many flights missed. So many people missed their connections and so many flights missed their stuff. You know, um, 
even customer service told me it was chaos down there and people were pissed which is understandable i mean uh you don't expect a thunderstorm to close the ramp for an hour and a half but uh it's it's upsetting for everyone involved you know it's upsetting for customer service for uh zone control or you know station operations it's upsetting for dispatchers pilots everyone you know in aviation and then you got the passengers who are like pissed as fuck because they don't even understand what's going on so they're even more pissed because they're in ignorance <laughs> now some passengers will be like yeah i understand what's going on there was a thunderstorm blah 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 that's why these flights are so delayed but the average passenger is just gonna be like hey this airline sucks because they made me late to my flight it's like nah dude <laughs> the weather sucks we're working around the weather I am terribly sorry. And if you don't understand what I'm saying and you're offended at what I said, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to go into. It's a lot to explain. I'm not going to sit here and lecture you on how aviation works because this isn't what this is about. It's about stories of growth and, um, ow. It's about stories of growth and how to move along in life. So, tonight was a chaotic night, hence the cigar. I'm actually getting to a point where I only really smoke or drink on nights that are like exceptionally terrible. So, one of the customer service supervisors and I have kind of been talking, getting to know each other and you know, she uh... She actually told me the other day that she would put in a good word for me so that I can upgrade as a supervisor in customer service. To which I'm like, holy sh, really? Like, really? Me, a ramp agent. Me, someone who's never worked in customer service. I can upgrade to a customer service supervisor? <laughs> um, I didn't say it like that out loud, you know, out loud. I was just like, um, okay. That's awesome, actually. I'm really excited, you know. I let her know my excitement. I let her know how I felt, but I didn't let her know on the inside. I'm just like, I don't think that's humanly possible. But that's what I thought about Zone. And look where I am now. I'm actually very comfortable with it. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I actually am used to it and I can, uh, you know. Ooh, garage sale. That already happened. I'm, I'm to the point to where I'm used to it and I'm comfortable and I can do my work fairly quickly and fairly well uh, given things are kind of standard. When things are less standard, uh, that's when I kind of struggle. But I'll get to the point where I can even handle the chaos. I'm learning little by little what standard operating procedures are for various things. Well tonight, uh, customer service took a lot of the delays which we later found out was due to holding for revenue standby passengers now a revenue standby is someone who paid for a ticket but missed their flight so they get put on another flight on revenue standby how revenue standby is determined i'm not gonna lecture you but let's just say this is the reason that customer service took a lot of delays tonight There was a Bozeman flight, of all things, that uh, took a one minute delay. Now what you need to understand about one minute delays is, is that everybody fights to the bloody death for a one minute delay. It's weird. The more time a delay is, the more people are like, okay, that's totally our fault. We're not gonna fight it. You know, they could have like a four hour delay on maintenance and maintenance is like, oh yeah, that's okay whatever <laughs> some maintenance delay you know it or they could have a two minute delay on maintenance and everybody loses their minds it's backwards to me like people should be fighting the bigger delays <laughs> it's like no you can't put that on us you gotta put it on the plane the plane broke down we didn't break it we just had to fix it to which i say those delays are necessary we don't want another thing like what happened on a <laughs> southwest where that engine blew up midair 
because it uh, fell apart because it had stress fractures on the fan blades that should have been caught ahead of time. But maintenance doesn't do their job, stuff like that happens. So I do appreciate the four hour delays that we take for maintenance because they could end up really bad if they don't do their job. So my recommendation, you want to avoid that headache, get on the earliest flight you can to your destination. Um, if it's like, you know, there's a Newark flight at uh, 3 o'clock and then your connection's at 6 o'clock and it's just, you barely have to wait any time in the airport, don't do that crap. Take your flight at 5 a.m. and go wait in the airport. Why? Because early in the morning there's not thunderstorms, but later in the day there's thunderstorms. Come on, man. you got to realize that we are very dependent on the weather. So I hit her up and uh, I'll admit, I didn't hit her up in the best way. So I said, TR1 from Zone. She said, go ahead. I said, hey, there's a one minute delay on Bozeman. I need to know what happened there because if I don't, I'm gonna have to put it at a CL, which is like the worst customer service delay. Like a one minute CL, people lose their freaking minds. So, she calls me, and she is angry the second I pick up. She says, hey, and just from her hey, I could tell this, this woman was pissed, and I felt like my heart drop an octave, and I was just like, oh my gosh, I messed up. You know, and I was like, in that tone where I was just like, I need to know quick. You know, and I needed to know quick because the, her people were about to go home. I didn't want her people to go home without me getting their side of the story. So I needed to know quickly so I could assign the proper blame. You know, typically CS delays, uh, they'll be due to like a, the handling of a customer or something. So I put that at a CH, Charlie Hotel, instead of a CL, Charlie Lima. And they're fine. They're like, okay, I took a one minute CH, whatever. It was because of a wheelchair passenger. I can't, I can care less. But CL reflects that it was customer service's fault because the agents were slow. Needlessly slow at that. So I wanted to be on her side and make sure that that got the proper blame. I didn't know what happened. I didn't catch it. It was a one minute delay. I saw it. I was like, what the hell? So I put a one minute delay on it on CL for now because that's a safe assumption. I didn't see any wheelchairs on the manifest. I didn't see any wheelchairs on the inbound wasn't clear to me what happened and I needed to know but she calls me and says hey I'm gonna go speak to your manager you know the shift manager because I feel very disrespected and I feel that was very disrespectful and uncalled for and she hangs up on me before I can even answer I was like oh my gosh I even said it as I was sitting in my seat oh man she's mad <laughs> and she was so I messed up, but at the end of it all, you know, I, I saw her storm up. I said, Hey to her. She said, Hey, and then just walked really quickly towards her manager and my manager. And I walk up to her in the middle of that conversation. And I was like, look, I'm sorry, but I really need to know what happened. And I wasn't trying to be rude, but I just need to know why this took a delay why it took a one minute delay i don't want to give the one minute delay to you guys i don't and then we talked it over you know we went from i appeared at her throat she appeared at my throat we talked it out and at the end of it all we were able to determine that my tone was very stressed out because of all the crap i was dealing with her tone was very stressed out with the crap she was dealing with. I did disrespect for her and I did make it sound like I was scolding her over the radio. So that was inappropriate. It, um, it, it went through to all of her colleagues and they all heard it. Ooh, ah. Yes, I'm running through sprinklers. Whatever. Oh boy.
So we resolved it. We talked it out like adults. We communicated and we got the side of each other's story. And at the end, I apologized to her for being so upset. And she apologized to me for, you know, being upset. And we reconciled. And a, a big way that I got an apology from her, even though I was mostly in the wrong, was admitting my fault. Something that I notice our generation doesn't like to do. We don't like to admit that we're wrong. We don't like to admit that we're fallen, broken people and we need to grow. But that's what I told her, that I, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to handle it like that. I didn't mean to come off as condescending or rude, which I did. I came off as condescending and rude, so that's... You know, that's my fault. That's my bad. I did make a mistake. I was in the wrong. And I acknowledge that. I feel like a big thing that our society does is just try to pretend, nah, we're perfect people. Everybody's perfect just the way they are. Nobody makes mistakes ever, <laughs> except for the assholes. But what happens when you're the a-hole? What happens when you're the jerk? You know? And tonight, I grew a little today because I messed up, but I recognized my mess up. And even though I mess up like on a daily basis at my job, I recognize my mess ups and I <laughs> make them right. Like today, I fixed a mistake that I made yesterday. Yesterday, I missed a minimal equipment list item that was a first class seat that was blocked. And then we sat someone in that first class seat. And then we had to convince them for a long time, hey, we need to get you out of that seat because it is it is MEL, minimum equipment listed. It is MEL. You cannot sit in that seat. Does the customer understand that the seat in front of him flopped around and could have hit him and injured him? No. Did we have time to explain that? No. <laughs> because we were trying to get the flight out as fast as possible. We really wanted to minimize the delay as was. So unfortunately, that customer had to go off inconvenienced and angered because of my mistake of missing an MEL. What did I do to fix that today? Checked all the MELs, called the gates about their seats. Even if they knew it and it was blocked out, I didn't care. I went the extra step to make sure that that mistake didn't get happen again. And I'm going to continue to repeat to make sure MELs are a big part. And Same thing with uh, call outs on the radio. You know, I need to call out, hey, a quick call from you, and then explain myself calmly and spend a little more time instead of being like, okay, I really need to get this out of the way because I have too many things to deal with. No. With humans, you really need to be careful and you need to be a lot more delicate, which I wasn't. <clears throat> I wasn't delicate, I wasn't careful, and I messed up tonight. So, why am I making this video? Why am I making these videos? I want... What are you doing jogging at this time of the night? Whatever. <laughs> She could ask the same thing about me, smoking my cigar and talking out loud, as if someone's listening. I want to share my growth, and I want to share how I'm growing. I know they may, that may not necessarily help you in your personal life, but it might. And I want to provide value. I want to show people how someone like them, a person straight out of college, can learn a lot. And I'll have later videos detailing how I got to this position in the first place. Because this is a management position I'm in right now. But it's only temporary. And then I'm going to purposely go back on the ramp for a little bit so that I can spend the winter break with my grandpa. Um, he's in poor health. 
because of an allergic reaction he had. One of his arteries is clogged and one of his arteries is very weak and he's going to have to have a prothesis. I don't know how to say it in English, there's a prothesis. It's going to like expand his artery um, and he's going to need to take blood thinners with it. Otherwise, he's going to get blood clots. So my grandpa just went from this super healthy guy uh, to this really unhealthy guy due to an allergic reaction to natural oils. So I want to spend some time with him this winter and I want to spend as much time with him as possible before I lose him because I know that's coming and it's going to come sooner than I expected it to. I don't know if my grandpa will ever get to meet his grand great-grandchildren through me. I really hope he does, but I really don't think that that's a possibility, especially considering the fact that I don't even know. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't even know any girls because there is one that I really like and she's acting difficult and she's acting distant and I think that's largely due to her job but it could also be due to some other guy and that's my insecurity that you know this girl that I really like and who fits all these qualities of a dream girl that I have in my head um oh, those sprinklers are getting close it's just a reality that I'm probably not going to end up with her, although I might. Every time I've tried to attempt to start a relationship, um, only one of them was successful, by the way. The rest of them were the girls leading me on. So I've been led on a lot, and um, this girl now that I really like, she might be doing the same thing. But. I've been let on so many times that I've come to the conclusion that girls just like to lead on guys and act like they lack a lot of guys and then finally decide which one of the 20 guys that are going after them they're going to go for. And I know that that girl is a catch and that I am just one of many guys who's going after her. If you could put it that way. Man, dating is so savage. I mean... She's pro she's definitely got like so many guys going after her and like I know about multiple guys that just like have hit on her and she's told me about them and she's like this guy tried to sleep with me, this guy tried to ask me out, this guy thinks of me as more than a friend when I only think of him as a friend. But I asked her out once. <laughs> and her words were thank you very much, you know. Um I do adore you, but I don't know if it would work out right now how my life is right now. And I'm thinking that's what it is right now. She's currently at a job that schedules her four days out. So four days out, she knows her schedule. Isn't that great? And I'm really trying to invite her to go to Elitch's and I just don't know if that's going to happen this summer. Uh, I have those that free pass until October, so I'm hoping at some point I will be able to take her to Elitch's and I don't know, maybe I'd be able to ask her out on a date after that or during that or turn that into a date. But I just don't know. And it's very uncertain. And I really hope she does actually like me and I really hope that she does actually adore me like she said so. Um I hope she does remember that, hey, I asked her out, and hey, I do like you as more than a friend. I really hope all that is going on. But we'll see. Like I said, I've had so many women... Oh, shoot, no. I've had so many women... Um, and by so many, I mean like I could count them all on two hands. Currently I have... Approximately 9k in assets and 3k in deficits. Which I know t money talk is t taboo in our society. But... You know, it's where I'm at. And how I'm gonna be able to make more money, start investments, and 
all that stuff it'll come I'm working on it I do need to get on top of starting my w2 I don't know my 401k yeah I need to start matching my 401k and depositing stuff into that so it's a good next step to take and we'll see where we go from there I guess while I'm here yeah this one's gonna be an extra long video isn't it while I'm here I can kind of talk about what uh, happened to get me into this place in the first place so you may not have guessed it by now I'm a Christian and I do believe in Jesus and I do believe that he died for our sins and is actively working in our lives and I went from being an atheist to a Christian in 2012 um, actually the summer of 2012 probably sometime in July I became a Christian so that's funny this is like six years later and then before I went to go live in Ecuador I met this girl I just miss her a lot but I've come to peace with the fact that I'm never gonna talk to her again I've but that's all right because it's the way God planned you know I had to have my self-righteousness, which I'm sure was a big reason she broke up with me, broken down, you know, like, back then I was a virgin, and I was, like, this upright guy, and went to church a lot, invited her to church, and church groups, and, you know, I was on the straight and narrow, like, in a way more devoted sense than I am now, but I guess in the end it was all useless because I was self-righteous I thought you know this girl's had sex before and I've never had sex so I think I got cheated out by for some reason I thought in my head that I got gypped and I saved myself for my wife and this girl didn't save herself for her husband so I got gypped I felt that I was better and quite frankly I'm sure that attitude in the back of my mind was felt by her and she felt unappreciated which she was and I at that if you asked me at that time if I appreciated her enough I'd be like yeah no I do I, I treat her like a princess I, I spoil her I, I absolutely adore her I, I just want to be with her you know but truth be told no I I, I underappreciated her and I was a piece of crap who never deserved her in the first place so the way things turned out it's sad that I had to lose this woman of my dreams and I thought I'd never meet anyone who came close to that again and then I met this girl and actually this girl that I like now um, shares a lot of the same traits but she doesn't share a lot of the same insecurities like that girl was very insecure very angry a lot and looking back on it you know quite frankly I I guess she wasn't ready and neither was I and now she is ready and now I'm ready but she's already with someone else so it's definitely not gonna be her and that's okay like I said I've already come to peace with the fact that that's just done and it's over and Alexi, you were one of the most wonderful human beings I ever had the pleasure to meet. You were definitely the girl of my dreams, and I didn't deserve to be with you for even a second. Even though when we were together, I felt like I was gypped, and I felt like I I had a girl that wasn't good enough for me. And even though I never expressly said that, I'm sure you felt it, and... I'm terribly sorry for the way I was. Thankfully, God had to rip my heart out and completely destroy everything I thought I was to get to where I am today. But I am ready to get out of this hole. And God's been showing me little by little, hey, you're going to get better. And I am getting better. I used to just substance abuse because I was bored. Now I substance abuse when I'm very stressed out and I need to relax and I need to see the world clearly, which is weird. 
you know, you smoke tobacco to see the world clearly, oh my gosh, you're being evil. That's what old me would have said, and new me has to say, yeah, it's a problem, and I'm dealing with it, and I'm trying to get away from smoking altogether, and I'm trying to get away from drinking altogether. It's going to be a process, it's not going to happen overnight. Which brings me to the reason why I decided to record this at 1 in the morning. Because this is my night. But the sun is rising. I'm getting out of this spot. God's restoring me to someone better than I was because I'm starting to be jovial again. I'm starting to feel joy. I'm starting to care about my life again. I'm starting to draw closer to him again even though for a while I, I resented him and I hated him for everything that he put me through but I understand now that that pain and that suffering was put in my life to make me a stronger better version of myself I'm growing and I'm getting used to life and I'm becoming someone I wasn't and that's the main topic, that's the main theme of all of this, is how I'm growing. And as time goes on, I'll get better. I no longer really obsess over getting back together with that woman, and it took a while. I think I finally realized after my last relationship just how foolish I was to allow myself to fall into that as hard as I did. Which I will talk about in another video. This video is already dragging on as it is. <laughs> so, until next time, take care of yourselves and keep growing.